All right, now I want to turn to uh, N-scale modeling, since that's HO. We'll go to N-scale modeling, and our, our uh, sponsor for that is uh, National Capital Trains. National Capital Trains is the largest supplier of N-scale modeling products in the state of Virginia. We have been in business since 1989. We carry a full line of modeling products, specializing in N and H O N3 scales. We carry a large selection of competitively priced high-quality N-scale products from Atlas, Bachman, Digitrax, Intermountain, Cato, Microtrains, NCE, Pico, Rapido, soundtracks, as well as brass. For foreign railroad train aficionados we offer a wide selection of Japanese and European prototype trains. We are located 20 miles from Washington, D.C. in Springfield, Virginia. We are a short 7-minute drive off Interstate 95. Stop in and see us for the best in N scale. We also have online ordering on our website including great prices and expert advice. Call us for your N-scale modeling needs and advice. Use the QR code to visit our website, we look forward to serving you. And now I'd like to run the, uh, the video that Mr. Clem Harris sent us for the N-scale modeling. Hi guys, this is Clem Harris, your new tracks modeling N scale host. Uh, for the month of August, we're going to be talking about T track and the standard that it has. And I'm going to give you about, I'm going to try and give you the best estimation about the 30,000 foot view of T track and what it's about. Um, there are some intricacy, intricacies and nuances of any uh, modular type setup. Um, I'll go into some of the pros and cons that I've seen uh, so far, and just again, from that 30,000 foot view. Um, one of the pros is it's very, very simple to set up these modules, and you'll see in my presentation what how the modules are built and how the track has to overhang by a certain amount, and it just snaps together with Kato Unitrack and the joiners that it has. Um, one of, another one of the pros um, in my mind is the uh, ease of Kato Unitrack. It, it makes um, track laying very simple. Um, however, one of the cons of Kato Unitrack is that in some instances it looks very toy-like and doesn't have it doesn't have that 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 feel of like a uh, uh, a true ballasted. Um, track segment that you'd see maybe on a home layout or maybe an end track or in, in Fremo N. Um, I think the simplicity of what T-Track is about is probably one of the biggest draws to it again because you can just set it down on a banquet table, uh, plug the modules together, plug in the power uh, between the two modules, and it's all Kato connectors, it's all Kato uni jo uh, Unitrack joiners uh, between uh, the track segments. Uh, it's about as straightforward as you get. Um, you'll see in my presentation today that there's a standard on how the modules can be adjusted. So if you have a kind of a goofy lopsided table at an event, you can actually still get it uh, fairly level and get uh, everything situated the way uh, it needs to be. Um, in seeing uh, the T-Track layout that was at Evanston, Wyoming during the uh, Fremo N event, um, I was actually very impressed with the simplicity 
of T-Track. Um, that hands down was my favorite part of seeing the T-Track is these guys were able to be set up and be able to set up very quickly and have have something up and running and they didn't have the complexity of, of N-Track. It didn't have the complexity of the Fremo N. And it's, it's probably as close to plug and play as you can get. I've seen instances online where groups, uh, various T-Track groups have set up uh, in, on short notice, maybe maybe at an event to show everybody, hey, this is what N-Scale's about. Or I know Kato has actually endorsed and done uh, local setups around their headquarters in Illinois where um, they've been able to take and set up a, a bunch of modules. And because those modules all interchange uh, pretty freely and pretty pretty easily, um, they can have something up and running uh, pretty quickly. Um, again, guys, this is the 30,000 foot view. This isn't uh, necessarily an endorsement for or against any, any particular standard. Uh, just, just to show you what's out there, just to show you the flexibility that N-Scale has. And you'll see with that flexibility, you can have anything from, from, an N -tra from N Track and some of the modules that, that are, have been created um, with N Track. Um, you can have the simplicity of T-Track, um, and then you can have the, a little bit of the complexity of, of Fremo N, and we'll cover Fremo N in uh, next month's segment. Thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoy my segment.
Well, guys, what did you think? As you can see, based on the standards presented, and again, this was the 30,000 foot view, just showing you what's available. I didn't want to dive too far into uh, non-standard modules or anything weird. Um, and basically the gist of the non-standard modules is that it's, it's the person's re responsibility that builds the non-standard modules to have a connection uh, module at each side of their modules that goes back to the T-Track standard, which is pretty straightforward. That's um, that's good housekeeping rule, basically. Um, one of the other things that I saw uh, that I really uh, like about T-Track, again, is just that simplicity. You can have something up and running very quickly. Um, having Unitrack available, you've seen in some of my videos that I've used just a, a basic loop of Unitrack on my dining room table for speed matching and for other, uh, just to kind of get an idea how something's running. Um, T-Track takes that a step further and adds the scenery to it. And the scenery and complexity of the scenery can is up to uh, what the individual feels like building. Um, I like, like I said, I like, I like the use of the Unitrack on it. Um, I, the one thing that is kind of a hang up for me personally, and this is not to knock in track, uh, excuse me, T-Track in any capacity, but one of the things that I find that is a little bit of a distraction too is um, that sometimes Unitrack without any weathering or without any additional ballast or even a ballast slope on the edge of uh, the track it can, can start looking kind of toy-like. Um, and to me, that's a little bit of a distraction. And again, I'm not knocking any of the T-Track guys because I've seen uh, between uh, online searches and what I was able to see at the uh, Evanston meet, uh, there were some actually really neat modules. Um, they also have a provision in their, uh, in their rules and for uh, building like yard modules or passing sidings. And again, it has the same standard. You have to have something that connects at each end to a standard uh, T-Track module. So you can, um, in some of the pictures that I share, you, you saw that there was a yard uh, in, in a couple of the, uh, the modules and it was a fairly substantial uh, yard. Um, one of the other neat rules I actually thought was pretty smart in, in how they wrote uh, everything was um, they have a, uh, it's not necessarily a rule, but it's guidance and instruction on the talking about non-standard modules and that you don't want more than a, a quadruple module. And that's basically a quadruple module would be um, f the equivalent of a, of a little over four foot of a module. And they described that because it, um, it, create, it might create an odd gap in a layout if you were trying to set up and didn't have a matching side on the other side. Um, plus it even goes it in, into mentioning that it's just difficult to transport, which I, I, hats off to whoever put that in, in that rule. I've actually thought that was pretty clever because you do get people that uh, they get excited when they're, hey, I'm gonna build a module and I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this, this and this. And, very quickly they realize that their module is uh, needs a lot more space or a lot more room than what uh, they originally envisioned. And they wind up building something non-standard. And then now you have to have um, either, either an adaption on the other side of the layout that has a, the same amount of space in a modular setup or um, you uh, you have to uh, it makes it difficult for people to transport and whether whether you're young or old starting to handle a large module you know that's four or five six foot long it, it gets to be kind of cumbersome and then you don't want to knock details off and, and depending on how you may have attached your buildings and other things um, it, it just makes for a lot of additional headache and, and again like I said hats off to the person uh, that, that actually had the foresight to put that in their, uh, in their recommendations. Again, the 30,000 foot view of T-Track. Um, it's kind of neat to see in person. Um, thank you very much for watching and I hope you enjoy this segment. Uh, next month, uh, we're gonna talk about uh, the uh, Fremo module standards and I'm gonna hit on uh, our, the event that I attended at the end of uh, July in Evanston, Wyoming. 
there were over 400 plus Fremo N modules put together and it was absolutely impressive guys. Uh, the first pass on the, on the layout that large took about six and a half hours to get around and this was meeting and passing trains and um, being courteous and not, run, not running too long of a train, uh, not necessarily running a short train. But I do look forward to sharing um, my, my first exposure to Fremo N with you and, and my son and I's trip to uh, Evanston, Wyoming at the end of July. Thank you very much for watching and have, have a good evening. Thank you so much, Clem. That was a great uh, presentation. We really do appreciate it.